one of my favorite ideas from Whitehead, which is really brought out by one of Whitehead's most able philosophical interpreters, David Ray Griffin, was that Whitehead's criteria, a criterion for judging what evolutionary progress is or how it's achieved, he said it's the, it's the, it's the capacity for experiencing greater amounts of intrinsic value. And, and, you know, Whitehead, using the God word, he said it even more simply. He said the purpose of God is the attainment of value in the temporal world. So what does this mean for integral? It means that, that the move of expanding the scope of what you're able to value, including progressive values, modernist values, traditional values, even pre-traditional values in your own purview, recognizing how these values work together, that's a move of inclusion which represents the evolution of consciousness. And these uh, these geniuses, Whitehead and Teilhard, both saw in their own way how this is how we can, I mean, there's, you know, the, how consciousness evolves, how the evolution of culture and consciousness can be cultivated is a deep and rich subject. But at the surface, you know, at the Institute for Cultural Revolution, our theory of change is that people's consciousness evolves when they expand the scope of what they're able to value. And we can read that insight right off of Whitehead uh, and his interpreters. Here's a graphic from Integral Consciousness that illustrates the synthesis in a different way. Um, you know, there's a polarity, the, the, the pull from within and the pull from without. And, and, and this polarity can be transcended uh, this idea of a dialectical logarithmic spiral, a spiral that's growing wider, uh, in includes both um, the idea of, 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 of cyclical change and vertical growth, because it, it's cyclical in the same that the, the spiral's returning to the same point as it moves up, but it's also vertical in the, in the sense that it's, that it's actually growing, that it's going beyond what came before. And this tries to show those three different, you know, the, um, the thesis, the antithesis, and the synthesis as three different lines. One of the ways of summarizing this is that the degree of our transcendence is ultimately determined by the scope of our inclusion. Um, it's almost like a, um, a, uh, a, a, a principle, right? That, that another way of putting it in the, the context of polarities is that um, the best way to forward in, in an interdependent positive, positive polarity, the best way to forward our preferred pole is to affirm the values of the pole we oppose. And, and that relates directly to this idea of the degree of our transcendence is only determined by the scope of our inclusion. Um, our ability to, to make the world a better place uh, ultimately depends on our ability to um, work with these forces in a way, uh, because once these forces are alienated, once we're disconnected, once we're de-inclusive, de um, then pathology often results. Um, and so the, my call to action uh, for uh, the folks who are at this conference and the folks who are on this call is that those who understand a new sphere of evolution, even if partially, are really called to become advocates for our culture's next evolutionary step, right? So we could be partisans of our particular preferred culture. We can be partisans of modernity or partisans of progressive post-modernity. But ultimately, if we want to be integralists or we want to use the spirit of, of Teilhard and Whitehead, then uh, if we want to be part of the part of the solution instead of part of the problem, then that means recognizing a certain amount of duty or, or opportunity to stand for the synthesis and to work to synthesize all the various oppositions that we encounter in our culture today. And uh, as the final slide, as Whitehead put it, it's through this process of synthesis that the many become one and increase by one.